Welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today I am introducing our new dies, Embroidered Thanks and Embroidered Hello. And these are so cool because they actually cut the holes for you to be able to stitch them into your card. So there you can see all the holes that it's going to cut. And I'll go ahead and take it and line it up on a little stitched white rectangle here. I'm going to hold it in place with some low tack tape. I'll run it through my die cut machine. And you'll see when I remove the die that it's created all of these stitching holes for you. And on the back of the packaging of this die, there's kind of a little guide to show you how to stitch it. And I always like to keep that little back of the packaging with my die so that I can pull it out and kind of use it as my guide. Because I'm actually a complete novice to stitching. I've never done anything like this before and I love that these dies make it super easy for me to do and that guide really helps me too. Now next up here, I am going to take some embroidery floss here, and this is some DMC floss, and I just thought it was really pretty with that variegated blue in it, but you can use anything. You can even stitch this with twine too. So I'm gonna run it through my needle, and then tie a double knot at the end. So it's gonna be doubled up twine going through my needle, and then with that knot right at the end. Then I'm going to start by going up from behind there and going up through that first hole, running my whole string through it, and then I'm going to go to my next hole. So I'll go right through, right back that one, run the whole piece of string there through that, and then I'll continue once again by going up through the back and towards the front just like that. And now you're gonna see there's kind of like a little skip between them. So I'm gonna go back and go through the hole that I just previously went through to fill in that space. So you'll see as I pull that through, now I've got one really pretty continuous line. And so I'll continue the same thing. I'll go up through the next hole and then go back through the other one, creating a nice continuous line that I think just looks so pretty. So I'll pull that all through there. And then I'm going to continue that process all the way through the word. And I just think this is so fun. We really thought that it would be fun to have stitching on cards, but since I had never done it before, I was actually really excited to have a die that would give me the guidelines. And I find it so fun and relaxing. And like I said, I'm not an expert. So if you have tips on stitching, I would love to hear them, but I just had so much fun doing it. And I think it adds so much to a card. So you can see here, I'm just going through and connecting that whole H and following that little pattern that I saw on the back of the packaging that comes with the die. Now here we're going to be coming up on the E and it's cursive so where the loop's going to go. So you can decide to have the loop either go under or over. In this case I wanted it to go under so I'm going to stick my needle under the thread and then back through that hole and of course then I'm going to drop it. <laughs> and then once I actually pull that through you'll see that the thread goes underneath. But you could do it the other way. It's totally personal preference in how you want it to look. But I kind of wanted it to look like I had written in cursive. So here you'll see I went through and finished the whole thing up and I'm going to stitch my last couple holes here. And then once that's all done, I can turn it over and just do a double knot on the back and hold that in place just like that. And once I've got that double knot going, I can just trim off my ends. And then here you'll see how beautiful that looks. I just, I just think it's stunning. Even just this with some little pattern paper behind it would be a gorgeous card. Now here I wanted to show you a different way of stitching. So I'm sure that you saw on the back there that it was like kind of a mess and really three dimensional. So this is another way to go. And this is just to go up and through every hole, not ever going back. And so you'll see I'm just going down and up through each hole, continuing on in the pattern, and that's gonna give me little gaps between all my holes. But I'll go backwards at the end and fill those all in. Honestly, I prefer the other, the method I showed you first. I just think it's more relaxing and I don't really mind the bulk in the back, but this is a really great way to go, especially if that bulk kind of messiness bothers you. So you'll see here that I went up and through every hole and now I'm gonna go back. So now I'm gonna go back through because I've gotten to the end. And by doing that, I'm gonna fill in all of the gaps. And when you do it this way, it ends up a lot cleaner on the back. So I'll keep going through my whole process. 
And then once I'm done with that, so here we're going to get to the H. And then once I'm done, I'm going to do the same process. So I'm going to fill in all of those gaps there right there on that H. And then once I get to the back, I can tie a double knot and finish that whole stitching. And then here is a look at both of them. You can see on the front they look pretty similar, but on the back, obviously the orange one is cleaner, but I just have more fun stitching that way, just going front and back, front and back. I just find it more relaxing. So it's totally up to you which way you would like to do, or maybe there's an even be better method out there, so let me know. Now here I'm trimming down some watercolor wishes paper from the six by six pad and also some craft card stock. And I am going to cut my embroidered thinks from that watercolor wishes paper. So I've got all my holes there ready to stitch. And this time I'm just gonna be using some plain white string there through my needle. And so I'm just gonna double that up through it and then tie a, tie a double knot at the end. And then I can start to stitch and I'm going to go the the back stitch way this time the very first way that I did it because like I said I just think it's the most relaxing way to do it and these really are relaxing I could just stitch these in front of the TV and do a bunch of panels and have some really creative and cool cards done but right now you'll see that I'm starting at the bottom of the T and going back and filling in all of those holes and you'll see there as I get to the uh, top of the T I'll finish it out and then I'll go ahead and continue that on to filling in the H and keep going through my whole cursive pattern like that. So now you'll see I've gotten to the S and the S in this thanks is um, actually separate. So when you look at the back of the packaging, it gives you the guide, the thanks is the thank is all connected and the S is its own separate thing, which I think is kind of cool. It's just a different look. So you'll see I'll finish that all up and it's just looking so pretty. I'll tie that double knot in the back and now I'm gonna work on creating my scene. So here you'll see I'm gonna cut my picket fence border die from some craft cardstock and then here I have my grassy hillsides that I'm gonna cut from some watercolor wishes cardstock and I'll go ahead and layer those because those have the same exact hill shape so they layer perfectly now next I am going to trim off any excess and then I can start to add this to my sky with that embroidered thanks and once again I'll trim off any excess there too Next, I am going to take some more watercolor wishes paper, the beautiful purple color, and I'm gonna add some stitch border detail to either side of this card stock. I love the stitch border dies because it really just adds a lot to it. And once I have that on both sides, I'll also trim down some mermaid card stock to be five and a half by four and a quarter. I also went ahead and trimmed off some of that grass. I realized the grass was just way too tall, so I just trimmed off a little bit and then trimmed off a little bit of that purple so that they would both still be the right size. Here I've added the little sheet from Bah Humbug, which is actually a Christmas set, but is so cute on this card. And here I'm gonna take one single thread, I'm gonna knot it in the back. I stitched it right through part of that S. And so I'll just create a double knot on the back, trim off any excess, and this string is gonna go down towards the sheep as if he's knitting. So I'm gonna add little drops of glue to hold this string in place exactly where I want it. I'm gonna tuck it behind some of the grass too and make sure that it has a really nice shape. Add a little bit of glue there to the sheep and attach that string to the sheep too. Then I'm gonna take an image also from Bah Humbug and layer that right on top so it looks like the sheep is knitting that, that sentiment, which is just way too cute. And then I'm gonna add just another little drop of glue to hold that string in place, and then use a bunch of foam tape to put that on top of that purple panel. Now here I wanted to stamp some wood grain onto my mermaid card stock. I didn't want it to be so plain, so I'm going to stamp it in Versamark ink to give it a tone on tone look. So this is the wood grain backdrop, so I'm just going to pick that up in the perfect spot on my card. And then I'll add some Versamark ink and stamp it out. And it's really subtle. It's much easier to see in person though than it is on the video, but it just adds that extra something. And I felt like the wood grain texture kind of went along with the whole knitting theme and the sheep theme for some reason. So there you can see that beautiful wood grain texture. I'll create a card base to layer this on, which is gonna be a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. And now I can start to layer all of my pieces. I'm gonna add a bunch of foam tape to the back of that main panel and you can just see how cute and fun this card is looking. Now this card was based on a card by Yainea that I thought was so cute that I had to share it with you guys. So thank you so much for, to Yainea for letting me remake this card on the video.
Now here I wanted to show you just so you can look back and see the difference between the embroidered thanks and the embroidered hello. And it really just is this extra thing, extra special thing to add to your cards. So now I have some beautiful cards from the design team to show you. This card by Shari is gorgeous. I love the black stitching. I think it looks really neat on that colorful plaid paper. And I love how Elise make, combines stamping and the stitching together to create a really cute sentiment with Elfie Selfie. This set by Lynette is so beautiful. I just love the stitching over the pattern paper. And then this card by Elena is also gorgeous. That stitching over that really cool background, it just looks magical for those fairies. And then here's the card that inspired mine by Yanea, and her blending is so gorgeous. I just love it so much. And then here's a card by Elise, and I just love how nicely Fab Flowers goes with these embroidered things. I love that Kristen did the stitch thing. She actually stitched it with our twine, which I think looks really, really cool. And then this card by Lynette is gorgeous, and I love how the stitching is both on the cardstock and the pattern paper. It looks really unique and beautiful. And then I love that Melissa added this as a sentiment on her layout. I thought that was so clever too. So I cannot wait to see your fun embroidered projects, so make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.